Okay, let's look at the little veggie garden. Not much going on, though I have some cabbages. And some sprouting broccoli and some leeks I need to take in. And I'm hoping that these beans will go to seed. These are Imarit. I love them, they're my favorite variety. Now we are to have a freeze tonight. The first one for this season. And um, so I have a cover for this Vigo bed here. My husband got it for my birthday. And I'll put that on, though the broccoli should be okay anyway. Nevertheless, have a few little carrots coming up. So, gotta get these leaves off. I'll be experimenting with what I can get through the winter. And this, um, more little carrots and lettuces put my shadow on it. My cabbages look pretty good. Um, and I put some cages here in case I wanted to drape frost cloth over them at some point. Um, but I don't know that I will. And then I have these green stalks. They're made in Tennessee. <laughs> And I used them last year and covered them with frost cloth and plastic and things. And actually had lettuce until early spring when a really, really hard freeze, I think it was in March, I believe it went down to 12 degrees or something dreadful like that, carried everything off. Um, but I have some lettuces. We had a big, big rain last night in it has taken my parsley down a bit. And I have these Lola Rosa lettuces that I've been harvesting and eating, they're wonderful. And then I also have um, spinach and scallions. I have spinach and scallions and some more young lettuce. And I do have a cover that I've gotten for this to try out. I think the salvia will make it through this freeze just fine. That's in the upper garden. Cascading over the side. That plant is a beast. Go past the fountain here that makes so much noise and I can't figure out how to turn it off without getting up there and unplugging it, which I'm just inclined to do. There's Miss Huff. Um, she should make it through the freeze okay. I put her here and the idea that this was a little bit more um, a protected area. She is supposed to be hardy. To zone seven. Um, we're ostensibly seven A, and we'll see. And then there is the beast of a cherry tomato. Matt's wild, and I expect that it will be carried off. So I'll harvest everything that I can get off of it today. Um, tomatoes are terribly, terribly tender things. And you can see this little garden, which I was late working on this year because there was a yellow jacket's nest here. Um, and they are mean little things. But the fall is, is hitting these hard. And, um, this time of year there's very little sun because we're in the mountains the and the changing of the season means that the sun is lower in the sky so it is behind the 
the trees and there isn't a lot of sun left here. Hoping my rosemary, this one is R, but it's supposed to be very hardy. And this one I think was called Hill Hardy perhaps. And then my lavenders, um, hoping that these will make it through. I planted all these things a bit high because the soil is very heavy and I amended it with sandy um, compost for drainage and so maybe it will make it. Um, I would really like that. They are, um, I think that one is a phenomenal and that one is sensational, but they are uh, Provençal la lavenders. And they are supposed to be fairly hardy. When I lived in Maine, I found that uh, English lavender was extremely hardy as long as it had good, good drainage. And we went down up there to something like negative 20 and that that motored on through so that poplar there's very little leaves left and they're on the ground in the garden <laughs> so um, our frost tonight is in fact a hard freeze um, interestingly it only gets down below freezing for an hour to 7 a.m., 8 a.m., that sort of range, which I find fascinating. So we'll see what goes. What will the freeze do to my hay racks on the deck? I don't know. The verbena has been fabulous. I don't know whether I should move it um, or just leave it to see if it makes it through the winter in the racks. There are a lot of things that will come out. The freeze will take out all the annuals in here like the lantana and um, well maybe there's more that will make it than I think. I think. I don't know. I doubt though that these um, Calibrecoa will make it. They're so pretty. I might put more of those in next year. They've done really well. They didn't seem to mind the excessive amount of rain we had for a while. Impatient will go. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to do. I usually, I, last year I put in violas and they made it through the winter. I also direct seeded um, uh, poppies and cornflowers, which I could do again. So, don't really know what's going to happen. I will be collecting seeds from the verbena to start in the spring just in case. I find that fresh seed starts really more easily than any that I bought. So tomorrow after the freeze we'll have a look. The interesting thing is that we have about three days of early morning freezes for a couple of hours and then it goes back to um, warmer nights in the 40s. Um, so it'll still be pretty. We'll just have to see what makes it through and then make some decisions about what to leave in the boxes. I'll leave, I'll leave the time in and, um, certainly I'll leave the parsley in and, um, from there we'll see. I don't know if I intend to leave this 
um, Lysimachia in. It, um, it will take over a bit. I might put some of that in my terrace to hang over. I think that would be pretty, but you, you do tend to have to watch it a bit. It can, it can be quite invasive. Let's see what happens tomorrow. Here is the little upper garden before the freeze. I have enjoyed these Cobea scandons. Um, this is a tropical annual, and I suspect that it will not make make it through. Um, will the enormous salvias? Well, I don't know. It has a certain prettiness. Um, the leaves are falling. I saw one hummingbird left this week. Um, and I did say, please go to Mexico, dear. But I'm keeping the feeders out just in case, or just a couple of the feeders out in case um, anyone comes through that needs it on the way south. Some of them stay quite late. Another one of my cobayas. Look at the bee. Oh, so lovely. The hum honeybees have been nuts this week. They must know. And, um, so I expect this to be fried tomorrow. <laughs> so one last enjoyment of it. These open, start white and open purple. I'll grow that again. Um, this is a pretty little salvia. Hopefully all of this will make it, make it through the winter. I don't know. And again, here is this enormous tomato. <laughs> so I'll come out and pick all the tomatoes off of that. And um, I know, I know it won't make it, as I said. Um, I'm curious about all the salvias. These I'm used to growing from seed to salvia farinacea because it wasn't, um, the hardy in Maine and the verbena of the Bernariensis. But it very well may make it depending on the winter. I hope the Amistad will make it. This, this Amistad salvia, which is, goodness gracious, 10 feet wide at least, it's 5 feet tall. Um, so I think what I'll do presently is come out and make myself a little arrangement of anything left. Um, on the offhand chance that it won't be here tomorrow. Well, this dolly has been gorgeous. Um, I succumbed to planting a dahlia or two, and I'll do it again. I have not made up my mind whether I will try to let this stay in the ground or take it up. I have not had great success in overwintering dahlias, um, or rather storing them inside. It may have just as great a chance out here, particularly if it's not um, a really bad winter. Anyway, it's it's been pretty 
this year, this first year in this garden. And um, I look forward to trying again next year. I um, learned a lot about this particular spot. And um, actually I don't mind the idea of spending a few months um, doing something else. I, I have some Rachmaninoff preludes I'm learning on the piano and I want to make some greyhound collars for the holidays and it's always reading and bread baking and that sort of thing so I'm of course taking the dogs on walks without worrying about mowing grass and deadheading and fertilizing and all those all those things and you see I'm trying to put a very very good spin on this and quite frankly um, you know I lived in Maine for eight years and the, <laughs> the winters were extreme and very long I think you might as well just call it six months of winter so this this is just a little break in, in gardening and um, we'll see what it looks like in the morning.